But the end of the story reveals that God does unite all things once again and through his love restores everything. And we will get back on track to his original plan. And there is no way to fathom how great, how wonderful, how powerful, and how exciting it's going to be when we are all made one again. Male and female, and this is so important, male and female. God created Adam by forming him from the dust, and from Adam brings Eve. It is that unity that God is honoring. It is that unity that God brings covenant around. Male and female united in covenant. That's our image in the earth, his image. Does that make sense? So God says, I want them to be in my image. So when we are united in this covenant of marriage, we are the full completion of what God says is his image for the world. That also was part of the process of when he was creating everything to keep it all unified. But one terrible little thing gets involved and like the atom bomb, blows it all up. Sin. And God says, I'm going to fix this whole thing, which brings us to this last portion. It's so, so important for you to get. He's filling and joining all things together as its creator. I want to draw you back to this last portion, and maybe it'll all tie up so that you can understand what we're trying to get at today. Have you not read, that's what Jesus says, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Whatever, therefore, God has joined together, whatever, therefore, God has joined together, whatever, therefore, God has joined together. I want you to say what God has joined together. Perfect. Let not man separate. I don't know how many of you have sustained injury in your life, but judging on the fact that you've got to this point in life, probably all of you. You know what it's like to get hurt, to get injured. Thankfully, many of us have never had to go through the injury of amputation. Amputation is the process of something in our body being severed from the body. Those who have gone through this explain how terribly excruciating it is to go through that process. It puts the body in shock, and it also forever changes the body from that point forward. When something is cut off from your body, your body can no longer operate in the same way that it once did in its whole self because there's been a removal. And this is what you need to know about the God who created heaven and earth. He did not create it, create it to be severed from one another. And yet sin has severed it, and so now the operation of it doesn't work like it once used to. But God says, that's, that's okay. We're going to fix this thing, and we're going to bring it back together. I'm going to tell the story of my grandpa, and I hope that you guys are going to be okay with this. Uh, just advise you up front. It's a little bit intense, but my grandfather was uh, a guy who loved to work with wood, carpenter to the core, just loved it, loved it, loved it. In Oklahoma, he was always known as the guy to go to because he would just craft beautiful things, but that requires lots of good tools. And if there, were, if there was one thing that would put a smile on my granddad's face, it was a brand new tool. Man, he loved it. He loved it. He would just create the most beautiful things with those tools. But those tools can not only be creative, they can be extremely dangerous. And one day, while crafting a piece of wood, he was using a saw. And his finger ran over the saw, and it severed his finger. Now, my granddad's solution to everything was just throw a hanky on it and get to the hospital. 
Now, if you know about Oklahoma, it's hot. And when you know what you do with the hanky, I think that's the last thing that you want to put on an injury, man. I don't get it. Uh, uh, uh. Germaphobes be freaking out right now. I freak out. It's just crazy. So anyway, a piece of my grandfather was put into his work. We'll just put it that way. And so he takes his hanky, and grabs, grabs his finger, and gets all the way down to the hospital. Thinks it's over. What are they going to do? They went through a process of making sure, even though that the finger was severed, that they could stitch everything back together. And there's a whole process uh, on a doctor's level that I cannot explain to you. But I will tell you that through a lot of stitching and a lot of agony, they were able to reattach that which was severed. He had his finger back. He was thankful for that. Can you imagine if the doctor said, I don't have what it takes, I'm sorry, your finger's gone, how that would have changed his life? My grandfather was not created to be without his finger. But the happenstance of his work severed his finger. And through the process of bringing it back together, he was able to be restored and made whole. The reason I tell you that story is because that's what God is doing. He's created all of the heavens, all of the earth. It all stems from his goodness, but sin has severed us. We see that even in the marriage relationship and what havoc is wreaked when sin overrides God's plan and the pain that it causes and the abuse that can be the result of it. That was never God's heart for something so beautiful. And the marriage relationship is also a mirror of God's relationship with his creation. He does not want to be separated from his creation. He does not want to be severed from the ones that he has loved. But there's a process that must go into place for that restoration, for that reuniting. And it's a painful process of stitching it back together. And that's what God is doing as the creator of both heaven and earth. It has been severed and he is bringing it back through his love and grace and mercy. This is the one true God showing you how much you matter. And where marriage is the first institution that he creates before the flaw of before the fall i almost said the flaw but i guess it's the same now because of sin we see the havoc that it brings but look what god can do when he unites man and wife look what happens to the family the family has something that they can pull upon where they see god's love exchanged for one another. That's really the heart of marriage. Did you know it? Many times we think we're taking covenant for one another. That nothing could be further from the truth. You're taking covenant with God for one another. That's why you're both present before God. You're not promising to each other. You're promising to God. I know that's misunderstood in our time. But if you're promising to God that you're going to do these things for the other, that means that you're needing to pull from God so that you can fulfill your promise. He gives you the strength that you need to fulfill your promise because you didn't make your promise to the person. You made it to him for the person. And so God aids you in that relationship because he becomes the source of, that creative source, to allow that unity to exist. God is the one who brings cohesion to all things because he's the creator of all things. And without him, everything separates. Without him, everything breaks apart. And for those who have battled with a broken heart, you know how painful it can be to be severed from something that God wanted you united to. Understanding that he is filling and joining all things together is what we should all be about every single day. The issue that we will find that drives these things apart, breaks these things down, makes these things un uh, uh, un unable to be endured, is sin. But that's why Jesus came, to take on his shoulders the full payment, the full requirement, for sin to be dealt with. And when we can embrace him, the payment that he made at Calvary is sufficient to overcome 
every bit of brokenness and every bit of sin so that unity can prevail and so the joy of goodness can be restored and so the god that made heaven and earth can through the power of jesus unite all things once again i don't care where you align on your eschatological belief your end time belief i've read the end of the book and it's as simple as this god wins and what does it mean to say God wins? Because I know that there are some crazy things out there that suggest improperly what God wins means. But God does bring back into unity everything that was lost and broken. The tragedy is there are some casualties who in their free will continually decide to say, no, I don't want that unity. And so there is a casting away in a terrible place. But the end of the story reveals that God does unite all things once again and through his love restores everything and we will get back on track to his original plan and there is no way to fathom how great, how wonderful, how powerful and how exciting it's going to be when we are all made one again. The joy of marriage is just a nod to the joy of completion when God reunites heaven and earth. We, as his image, are that example. And my friends, can I just suggest to you this? That you today, as a Christian, united with Christ, have the ability to be an agent of that process, to restore and renew, and to bring back that wonderful goodness that God has intended for everything. It's in your fingertips. It dwells within you. Because if you said yes to Jesus, you are, as the word says, an ambassador of this unity.